hello students welcome back to engineers academy do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time now we are going to solve this problem which says that the hangers support the joist uniformly so that it is assumed for four nails on each hanger carry an equal portion of the load if the joist is subjected to the loading shown Determine the average shear stress in each nail of the hanger at ends A and B. Each nail has a diameter of 0.25 inch. The hangers only support vertical loads. So we are given this mechanism and here we have the hangers and the hangers are supported by four nails and they carry the equal load. And this joist is subjected to this uh, distributed load which is having the intensity of 30 pound per feet here at end A and 40 pound per feet at end B. So first of all since we want to find uh, the average shear stress on each nail we have to find the force which is supported or we can say the force which is applied on each nail. So for that we will, we will consider this part of the mechanism and we will find the support reactions at A and B. So we will have FA and we will have FB here. So we will find FA and FB and then we will apply the, we will apply the average shear stress formula and then we will be able to find that uh, average shear stress in each nail. So in order to find FA and FB first of all we have to convert this distributed load into the concentrated load. So as you guys can see that we can subdivide this distributed load into two concentrated load. One of the concentrated load will be this rectangular load and one of the distributed load will be in the shape of this triangle. So as we know that we can replace the rectangular distributed load by its resultant force if we find the area of this rectangle. So we can replace this rectangular distributed load by its concentrated load and that concentrated load will be acting at the, will, will the, the line of action of the concentrated load which will replace this rectangular load will pass through the centroid of this rectangle. So we can replace this rectangular distributed load by, by a concentrated load of magnitude equal to the area of that rectangle. We can say that this force will this force will replace this rectangular distributed load and this force must be acting at a distance of 18 divided by 2 at the mid length and let's say that from here to here this is 18 divided by 2 or we can say 9 feet and the magnitude of this concentrated load will be equal to the area of this distributed load which is in the shape of a rectangle right so the area of that rectangle is 30 multiplied by this 18 feet so 30 into 18 is 30 into 18 is 540 so 540 we can say 540 pounds and similarly we will replace this triangular distributed load by its concentrated load and that concentrated load will be will be, uh, the, the action the line of action of that concentrated load will pass through the centroid of this triangle and the centroid of this triangle is will be somewhere here so we will have that force here right so let me show that force which will distri which will replace this triangular distributed load and the magnitude of this distributed load will be equal to the area of this triangle. Now the area of this triangle will be 1 divided by 2 this base which is 18 multiplied by this height. So this height is this whole length is 40 this is 30 so this height is 40 minus 30 so 1 divided by 2 into 18 uh, into 40 minus 30 which is actually 10. So we can say that 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 18 multiplied by 40 minus 30 this gives us 90. So this is equal to 90 pounds. So this is 90 pounds or we can say 
and this concentrated load which replaces that triangular distributed load is equal to 90 pounds and this force will pass through the centroid of this triangle and the centroid of this triangle is at a distance of two third of this length from this end and from this end it is one third of this length so we can say that that 90 pound force is going to act from here to here this distance will be two-third of this 18 two-third of this 18 so we can say that two-third of 18 is 12 so we can say that this is 12 feet and now we can show the support reaction so at a we will have f a and here we will have f b and we want to find f a and f b so now if i apply the sum of the moment about point a the sum of the moment about point a that must be equals to zero counterclockwise moment is assumed to be positive now as you guys can see that this f b is producing the counterclockwise moment about point a so i will write plus f b the moment arm of this FB from that point A is this distance which is 18 so multiply by 18 this 540 is producing the clockwise moment so you will write minus 540 the moment arm of this 540 from that point A is this distance which is 9 feet multiply by 9 this is producing the clockwise moment we will write minus 90 and the moment arm of this 9 90 pound force from that point A is this distance which is 2 third of 18 feet so this is 12 this is equal to 0 from this we can say that FB is equal to plus 540 into 9 plus 90 into 12 divided by 18 this gives us FB which is 540 into 9 plus 90 into 12 divided by 18 so this is equal to 330 so fb is equal to 330 pounds similarly we can find fa if we apply the sum of the forces in the y that must be equals to zero upward direction is considered to be positive now we have fa which is acting in the upward direction that is in the positive y so we will write plus fa 540 pound force is acting in the downward direction 90 pound force is acting in the downward direction fb is acting in the upward direction which has a magnitude of 330 this is equal to zero and from this we can say that fa is equal to plus 540 plus 90 minus 330 540 plus 90 minus 330 fa is equal to 300 so fa is equal to 300 pounds and fb is equal to 330 pounds now we want to find the average shear stress in each nail so if we consider the single nail at point either at point a and b let's say let's say that this is the nail at point a so this is fa fa is the reaction force so the applied force on the nail will be in the downward direction so let's say that this is the force which is applied on one of the nail which is located at point a so since we have four nails at each end so one one fourth of this force will be carried out by one nail since we have four nails so we can say that the force which is applied on each nail at a will be equal to 300 divided by four pounds and since we want to find the average shear stress then we have to pass a cutting section somewhere here and if we pass a cutting section here then we will expose the cross-sectional area and then we will have uh, we will be able to find the shear force so if I pass a cutting section this will be our free body diagram and then here we will have the shear force on single nail and now if we apply the sum of the force in the y for a single nail upward direction is considered to be positive we have the shear force in the positive direction minus 300 divided by 4 in the downward direction this is equal to 0 and we can say that the shear force for each nail is 300 divided by 4 pounds 
and we can say that now since we, are, we want to find the average shear stress so the average shear stress on each nail will be equal to V divided by the dia of uh, the area, the cross-sectional area of each nail which is pi divided by 4 d square. So shear force is 300 divided by 4 pound pi divided by 4 and dia is given which is 0 0.25 inches. So 0 0.25 square. So this is equal to, now you guys can see that this 4 will cancel out. So we can say this 4 cancels out and we will have 300 divided by pi into 0 0.25 square. So this gives us 1528 approximately. So 1528 and this dia is an inch. So this will become inch square. So this is pound divided by inch square and pound divided by inch square is PSI. And we can say that 1.5 3 KSI. So this is the average shear stress on pin A. Uh, sorry, uh, on the nails at A, right? Similarly, we can find um, applying this, applying the same concept. We can we can consider the nail at B. So let's say that the nail at B will be. We can draw the free body diagram for the nail at B. And now the force on the nail at B will be acting in the downward direction as well. And that will be FB divided by 4, which is 330 divided by 4, since we have 4 nails at in B as well. And if we pass a cutting section, so then we will expose the shear force. And this will be the shear force on B. Let's say this is the shear force on nail at A. So if we apply the sum of the forces in the Y again, so we will have shear force on each nail at B in the positive direction minus 330 divided by 4. This is equal to 0 and this is equal to 330 divided by 4. And applying this, the same average shear stress for formula for nails at B. Now the shear force at B divided by pi divided by 4 dia of nail square. So this is equal to 330 divided by 4 divided by pi divided by 4 0 0.25 square. 4 will cancel out and we will have 330. So this gives us the average shear stress on each nail at end B is equal to 1681 pound per inch square or PSI and if we write it if we divide it by 1000 then this will be 1.68 KSI so this is the average shear stress on each nail at B and this is the average shear stress which is acting on each nail at A so this is the solution of this particular problem I hope this will help you in your learning do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hebler.